Currently, everyone is thinking about the war in Ukraine, and since I mostly focus on Italian politics, I thought it would be interesting to make a video on how the Italians and the Italian leadership has reacted to this whole deal. For those of you that are new, hi, I am Ipernik and I make videos on Italian history and politics in English. Let's start by looking at some polls. According to the site Demopolis, 65% of Italians are very concerned over this conflict, not necessarily because they fear a Russian invasion, but because of the sudden rise of living costs, the pending economic crisis, the sanctions we had to impose, and of course the huge wave of refugees. When it comes down to how the conflict should be resolved, according to the polls shown in La 7, an Italian TV channel, 43% of Italians think that Ukraine should give up, 42% think that they should keep fighting, and the remaining 15 are unsure. As for the question if Italy should be more involved in the conflict, Conflict, the results are similar, with 46% saying that Italy should stay out of it, and 43 saying we should go all in and send our troops over. The poll that surprised me the most, however, is the one regarding sending weapons to Ukraine, which has 55% of the candidates saying that they are against it. The reason why it had such an impact on me is because that's exactly what our Prime Minister Draghi has been doing ever since the invasion has begun last month, with the parliament's overwhelming support. One of the more vocal supporters is without a doubt Enrico Letta, secretary of the Democratic Party and former prime minister. Letta has been gathering a lot of support lately, way before the war even began. He is a social democrat with deep ties with the European Union. He got some clout even from abroad for roasting Marie Le Pen on French national TV for supporting Putin in the past. Some of you might be wondering right now, hey, this guy sure seems very supporting of the weapon industry for being left wing, and to that I say, yeah, that is shocking. I've been meaning to talk about how the Italian Democratic Party has become more and more similar to its American counterpart, but I can't get into it right now, so be sure to like and comment down below if, if that is a video you would like to see in the coming weeks. Unlike his colleague and ally later, Giuseppe Conte the party secretary of the Five Star Movement has declared to be against the rearmament and against the sending of military aid to the Ukrainians. The rearmament is about increasing the military spending up to the 2% of GDP as it was previously established by Italy's entrance in NATO. It is unclear how this development will go over the next few weeks. The centrist such as Renzi and Calenda have not been doing much other than whine about the fact that we need more diplomacy and saying that the European Union should be more united to face the Russian threat. Something that I can definitely get behind, as with most Italians apparently, who seem at least open to the idea of a unified European army. But that's enough of the left right now, let's get into the juicy part, the right. Giorgia Meloni, far-right leader of the party Brothers of Italy, was caught saying good things about Putin in the past, and she is a close collaborator to the Hungarian leader Viktor Orban, since they share the European party affiliation. However, she was always careful to not condone Putin too much, so she never really took too much of a firm stance regarding his regime, unlike Berlusconi and Salvini. Berlusconi, back when he was prime minister in the early 2000s, he always uh, had a close personal relationship with Putin, and they would hang out as far as 20 18 amicably. Today Silvio Berlusconi is not as powerful as he used to be but Forza Italia remains a key component to the right-wing coalition and its leader, one of the most influential men in the field of entertainment, sports and yes, politics. Apparently after the pandemic Berlusconi and Putin stopped seeing eye to eye and after Silvio tried to get in touch with his old friend shortly before the start of the conflict he openly denounced his actions and voted in favor of the sanctions in the EU Parliament. Salvini is another story. Since 2015 he has been openly endorsing Putin, calling him a great and noble president, who is 10 times better than our leaders, who were democratically elected mind you. Lega and the Kremlin have also been doing business for years. Salvini praised Putin often for his stances on religion and immigration, and he said that we should remove any kind of sanction towards 
Russia. Then the war happened and Salvini changed its stance completely, announcing that he intended to, to go to the Ukrainian border to show support to the refugees. He went to a small town in Poland called Przysmil, where he met the mayor Wojciech Bukan, who was not very talkative at first, but then in front of the press he gave a speech and at some point he took out one of the shirts Salvini used to wear back in the day, depicting Putin's face. He is a hypocrite, I refuse to associate with him, that is what he said. As if it could not get any worse, Salvini while walking back in shame was faced with an Italian photographer who called him a clown. Karma is a bitch. Another person that I want to mention before we end the video is our foreign minister Luigi Di Maio. He is one of the most important members of the Five Star Movement and one of the youngest foreign ministers we have ever had. Weeks before the war, he has given many honorary titles to Russian officials, probably trying to deceive them from attacking Ukraine. Not only that, but he went to Moscow and Kiev during the military drills in an attempt to reduce the tensions, but instead he was was roasted by the ambassador, calling him out for spending too much time at Ufates eating exotic dishes rather than actually doing diplomacy. Di Maio looks like a bit of a chump, but it doesn't mean he's totally unhelpful. As soon as the war started, he went to Algeria to get Italy good gas and oil deals that might help us get over our dependency from Russian gas. I'm not sure how much that is going to help, but we will have to wait and see. Plus, it's Algeria, a country that is probably even less democratic than Russia. Only time will tell if this is going to be ultimately good for us and in Europe. But one thing is certain, Putin has made the EU more united than ever, so if he was trying to split us apart, then well, I can't say he won the battle. Thank you all guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe if you did, and I will see you next time.